we first begin by connecting to our Chinese correspondent Huang Hojun. Hojun, so we hear that uh, President Moon and uh, Kim Jong Un will visit Mount Pekdusan together tomorrow. Well, Daniel, if we said before that there aren't that many factors that would surprise us reporters during the third inter-Korean summit this year, well, the Blue House spokesperson Kim Yong's abrupt announcement this afternoon about President Moon's itinerary tomorrow was one of many that proved us wrong. Take a listen. President Moon Jae-in and Chairman Kim Jong-un will visit Baekdusan Mountain together tomorrow. Chairman Kim suggested a visit which President Moon accepted. Uh, the announcement elicited probably the loudest exclamations from the reporters here at this whole media press center. According to pool reports on the Q&A, uh, the uh, spokesperson had in Pyongyang soon after the announcement, the two leaders will head to the southern summit of Pekdusan via a cable car, and if weather permits, they will also head down to Cheonji, the crater lake on top of the mountain. The First Ladies, uh, the South Korean delegation and the pool reporters are also expected to accompany the two leaders and they will all return back to Seoul from the Sanjian airport, the closest airport from the mountain. Now, just to refresh you, Mount Baekdusan is the highest mountain on the peninsula. It lies on the border of North Korea and China and holds great symbolic value to both South and North Koreans. Its name is even mentioned in the opening verse of the South Korean national anthem. However, due to the division, South Koreans have only been able to go up the mountain from the Chinese side of the border. Tomorrow's visit will be a dream come true for President Moon. I'll remind you, the South Korean president said to his North Korean counterpart in April during the first inter-Korean summit that he wishes to visit the mountain from the North Korean side and that he hopes Kim Jong-un would make this wish become a reality. He reiterated his dream of climbing the mountain as soon as he arrived in Pyongyang while still on the plane. Definitely. Uh, so there you go. That's something that we can definitely look forward to. Right, Hojin. So let's now talk about the declaration that was uh, assigned between the two leaders. Of course, there were some exciting developments there. Senior Presidential Press Secretary Yoon Young Chan gave a recap of the agreement just a couple of hours ago. Well, that's absolutely correct. Uh, he underscored that the Pyongyang Declaration talks about the denuclearization, uh, improving inter-Korean relations, and also de-escalating uh, military tensions. He stressed that Pyongyang expressed its willingness to destroy the Yongbyon nuclear site, calling it North Korea's practical determination for denuclearization that would end the era of war and open a new era of peace and co-prosperity. This was probably aimed at the U.S. government, which has raised concerns about North Korea's willingness to actually follow through the denuclearization process. The U.S. has demanded Pyongyang prove its commitment, such as providing a list of its nuclear facilities. North Korea in return demanded that an official declaration ending the Korean War must come first. The conflict led to the sudden cancellation of U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo's planned visit to Pyongyang in August. Yoon said President Moon will brief his U.S. counterpart uh, President Trump on the sidelines of the U.N. General Assembly next week on both the disclosed and confidential results. That is set to take place next Monday. And finally, regarding North Korean leader Kim Jong-un's promise to visit Seoul by the end of this year, Yoon was wary about jumping to any conclusion, such as an official declaration to end the Korean War then. But he said the fact of a North Korean leader physically visiting the South Korean capital holds great significance for inter-Korean relations and the security landscape of East Asia. Now, Yoon also confirmed again that President Moon is scheduled to watch uh, the North Korea's uh, mass game, the signature mass game called, quote, Brilliant Fatherland. And we can also expect a short speech from him, uh, which will also likely be broadcasted live. Daniel?